In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Hello and warm welcome to all of you, dear brothers and sisters, viewers of Marjayat TV. You're with us with our episode of program Marjayat Horizon. Stay tuned, watching news, reports, and meetings. All regarding the Grand Jurist, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Hosseini Shirazi. Islam encourages the women to have active roles in societies and perform the responsibilities given to them by God Almighty. In the meantime, it warns the women to protect their honor, purity, and high position granted to them by Islam. Among women activists in the field of religion and culture, the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi delivered a lecture and reminded them of their heavy responsibility in introducing the culture of Ahlulbayt and the true Islam. The Grand Jurist referred to some words of the Commander of the Faithful, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, who ordered all the believers in all the times and places to bid good and forbid evil. In 610 CE, God began to reveal the message of Islam to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Mecca. Prophet Muhammad called people towards the belief in one God and encouraged them to be just and merciful to one another. In reforming the pagan Arab society, he particularly transformed their mindset regarding the treatment of women. Islam abolished the practice of killing female children and raised the stature of women in society to one of dignity, esteem, and privilege. God Almighty has also devoted an entire chapter of the Holy Quran to women. In addition, God directly addresses the women repeatedly throughout the Quran. Islam proclaims that all human beings are born in a pure state and that the goal of every Muslim is to preserve this purity by shunning evil tendencies and beautifying their inner beings with virtuous traits. In this respect, the central office of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadr Shirazi in the holy city of Qom welcomed the big number of cultural and religious women activists in Ramadan 23rd coinciding with July 11, 2015. In this big gathering, the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi delivered a lecture and developed some points regarding the women's role and their responsibility in introducing the genuine Islamic teachings to the non-Muslims. The Grand Jurist opened his lecture with a moral point for the women, saying that cutting relationships is an extremely detested act in Islamic thought and traditions. Then, Ayatollah Shirazi furthered this point and said each Muslim individual has duties and responsibilities towards all members of his or her society, including the family, relatives, and other people. And if one advertently fails to fulfill this heavy responsibility, they will be held accountable and blamed. The act of cutting terms with the members of the society where one lives in is either a grave sin or a big mistake that should be avoided at all costs, the Grand Jurist added. I want to make a recommendation to you, dear ladies. You all are mothers, sisters, daughters, aunts, cousins, grandmothers. But whoever you are, never cut terms with people, though it sounds difficult, but it is so important. So if you cut relationship with your family, then it's a grave sin. And if they are not your family, it is an extremely big mistake based on Islamic scriptures. You should make a faithful decision about this issue and never cut relationships with anyone. No matter what connections you have with people, try not to break them up and never end your relationships with others. If others cut terms with you, you shouldn't do the same. If they reproach you, you shouldn't do the same. Not only this is not humiliation, but also this is the highest stature you can gain in this world and the afterlife. If you read the history of the 14 infallibles, you will see that despite the numerous problems and hardships they suffered from, the people, they never cut relationships with them. Although these hardships led to the sufferings and even martyrdom of infallibles, they never left people and always stayed with them. There is only one exception to this issue, and that is Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, who cut terms with the enemies of the Holy Prophet of Islam after his martyrdom, and that exception was rooted in an extremely important ideological belief when the Islam was in jeopardy of being derailed from what the Holy Prophet had ordered. Cutting relationship is an abnormal act, either with the family members or the rest of the people. In the second part of this lecture, Ayatollah Shirazi alluded to the last words and wills of the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali, peace be upon him. The grand jury stated that after gathering of his family, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, addressed his words to all people who will hear of him in all places and times. This made the call of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, to remain fresh and resonate through the long centuries that have passed since then. 
Imam Ali declared that bidding good and forbidding evil are the responsibilities of all Muslim men and women, and if this practice is abandoned, then the villains will rule over you and your prayers won't take effect. My second point is regarding the last words of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, who said, and do not abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. The Imam continued with these words, otherwise, the villains will rule over you and then your prayers won't take effect. Now, I speak about the first part of the sentence where Imam Ali, peace be upon him, instructs us not to leave the very important practice of bidding good and forbidding evil. Imam Ali sends his advices to all men and women, as he declared it at the beginning of his words. Do not desert the essentially important practice of bidding good and forbidding evil. Of course, you should not forget that you better be a good doer in the first place. These are two different acts. Firstly, you should decide to fulfill your duties and secondly, you should decide to guide others as well. Definitely, if you didn't fulfill your duties, it shouldn't stop you from guiding others since they are two distinct acts. The most significant and important good are the ideological beliefs. They include oneness of God Almighty, His justice, the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad, the Imamate, and the Judgment Day. Each of these pillars of Islam has its own explanations and descriptions. These beliefs are foundations of Islam. They are the foundations of all divine religions. The invitation of Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, up to the Prophet Muhammad's invitation. They all are founded on these beliefs. The most significant good are the beliefs and the most devastating evil are corrupt thoughts and beliefs. Corrupt beliefs regarding any of the beliefs, like oneness of God, justice, prophethood, emimate, and the judgment day. They are the most devastating evil ever because they eradicate the foundations. Next are the Islamic rulings and obligations and the people. Then the topic of moral and amoral acts is of high significance. At fourth come the issues concerning the recommended and detested acts either in rulings or morals. These are how the good and evil are ranked according to their significance. You have this responsibility to introduce the good to the people and inform them of the wrong. If they get to the right way, then that's marvelous. But if they reject to step in the right way, then you have done your part and they have received clear proofs. That person cannot complain to God Almighty that she has not been informed of the right and wrong and she will be questioned for her wrong acts. There are tens of narrations and verses of Holy Quran that indicate this concept. A verse of Quran says, The people should not have a plea against Allah. It means that we shouldn't leave out the practice of bidding good and forbidding evil so that there would be people who have plea against God Almighty as those people would complain why others didn't tell them about their mistakes. Of course, you are not held accountable if you fulfill your duty and tell them about the right way, although they don't listen to you by their own wish. There are no limits to inviting people to the right way. You can talk to thousands of people at a time. Today our world is swamped into ignorance and deviation by the mass propaganda preached by the big number of satellite channels and other communication platforms. Now here is the question, don't the believers have any responsibilities to preach the good and denounce the evil? We shouldn't limit the great practice to the daily acts of worship, it should not be restricted to the believers. As I said earlier, the most important good are the beliefs. Today, billions of people, young and old, men and women, educated or uneducated, are not in the right way. Is it not mandatory for the believers to guide them to the right way? Of course it is. It is a collective obligation. Anyone who has the power to do his job in preaching goodness and denouncing evil, they should do their part or they are blamed. The women should found Hussein Yaz and Moss hold religious sessions and gather together. And more importantly, they have this responsibility to establish satellite channels to transmit the message of Quran and the Ahlul Bayt to the world. Men and women, they both have this responsibility to lead the people. If the men fail to fulfill their duties in preaching the true Islam, are the women exempted for doing so? Absolutely not.
In the meantime, the Grand Jury Ayatollah Shirazi asserted that women's involvement in activities related to bidding good and forbidding evil should not deny them from the high position given to women by Islam. The Muslim women, Ayatollah Shirazi emphasized, must preserve the decent and pure personality next to pursuing these activities as God Almighty obliges all people to perform their duties in its right form. Imam Ali said, Never abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. So you have this responsibility to conduct this job both in your country and the war through the media outlets. All men and women have this responsibility, but there's one difference in this case, and that is you dear ladies should preserve your high position as Muslim women. One of the most recommended responsibilities of the women is to stay pure in the society and preserve their high personality. Considering all these elements, the women are expected to fulfill their duties regarding bidding good and forbidding evil. This is a collective duty for all Muslim men and women, and they shouldn't relinquish until this duty is perfectly completed by others. Ultimately, the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi expressed his high hopes for the true call of Islam to reach remote lands through establishing international channels. Ayatollah Shirazi also prayed for all men and women who work hard in the way of Ahl based culture and appreciated their great work. The last advices of the commander of the faithful Imam Ali, peace be upon him at the early morning of the 21st of the Holy Ramadan, addresses all people who will hear of this message. And now that I related these words of Imam Ali, all who hear me or will hear me should fulfill the last words of Imam Ali, who said, And do not abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. I hope the Almighty God accepts all your acts of worship and they remain in your records. I also pray the Lord to grant all men and women success in acting on the last words of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and do not abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. Otherwise, the villains will rule over you and your prayers don't take effect. May Allah bless Muhammad and his pure descendants. <laughs>- Hello to everyone. My name is Sheikh Muhammad Ali Mujahid. Firstly, I offer my regards and sympathy to the Savior of Humanity, Imam Mahdi, may God hasten his reappearance for the sad martyrdom anniversary of his holy forefather, Imam Ali. We are here in the holy city of Karbala by the shrine of Imam Hussein, which is a heavenly place. The Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi has always been giving us instructions for marking the Knights of Qad by holding various programs and serving the pilgrims of Imam Hussein in the city. To accomplish these words of the Grand Jurors Ayatollah Shirazi, the cultural and charitable institution of Umar Habiha has held a public serving of iftar to all the pilgrims of this shrine. This program continues for three consecutive nights in the series ending to the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein peace be upon him. Narrations have also accredited this act as they say, whoever serves a believer with iftar in this holy month of Ramadan is like that he has set a slave free for the Lord's sake. Thanks God, the institution of Umar Abiha has managed to hold several cultural and charitable activities such as distributing books and serving iftar, and I hope that it will continue with these helpful activities. I pray God Almighty to help all the believers, especially those who had a hand in this job, so that they can keep on the good work. <laughs>
Imam Shirazi World Foundation is an Islamic center dependent to the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi, located in Washington, D.C. On the eve of the month of Ramadan, this center sent a letter to Islamic countries and asked them to grant amnesty and release the prisoners of conscience in their countries. Imam Shirazi Foundation stated that this act can be a good step in resolving old-time problems with the oppositionist inland or abroad. Let's watch a report about this letter. Freedom in its various forms has been one of the most notable characteristics in Islam. This idea is supported through different verses of the Holy Quran, the traditions of Prophet Muhammad, and the pure progeny of His Holiness. However, this face of Islam has been distorted by vicious and unjust rulers who made this holy religion and its glorified teachings a tool to secure their autocratic reign over the people. Today, it is so sad to witness the constant rise in the number of conscience prisoners, especially in the Muslim countries. That is why Imam Shirazi World Foundation, an institution dependent to the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi, has requested all Islamic countries to expand their tolerance and let other voices be heard, so that through these measures, happy societies together with great developments are portrayed for the Muslim world. The message of this institution reads as follows. Shirazi World Foundation invites all leaders of the Islamic countries to release the prisoners of conscience. Coinciding with the blissful month of Ramadan and with the upcoming Eid of Fitr, Imam Shirazi World Foundation invited all leaders of the Islamic countries to value this opportunity and orders the release of all prisoners of conscience, as well as the political prisoners. This institution believes that launching of this humanitarian initiative will have a positive and great consequence in terms of both the political and social reform. Moreover, this generous act will send felicity and happiness to the hearts of the families of these detainees in such a holy time. Imam Shirazi World Foundation also said that this move can be a springboard to the formation of new atmospheres and dialogues. It continued that such actions can end some problems between governments and their oppositions, inland or abroad. Besides, it will serve as a step to terminate the long-lasting conflict that are epidemic in most Arab and non-Arab Muslim countries. This institution also indicated it is for many years that the Muslim world has been suffering from severe clampdowns on both political and social freedoms. All these have resulted in serious repercussions and problems and have led to spiritual and economical deficits. Therefore, reformative movements along with a stabilized political determination and unified efforts are needed for facing the crisis storming all people and God is the greatest of all. Imam Shirazi Walt Foundation, Washington, Ramadan 23rd, 1436. <laughs>
Nonviolence Organization has also reportedly voiced its anger over the Bahraini incident and offered its solutions to the ongoing crisis in Bahrain. This center has recently released a message that reads as follows. Nonviolence Organization, Free Muslim, condemns the arrest of Ibrahim Sharif, a Bahraini political opposition and activist by the government forces. This center considered this act as designed by the Bahraini government to provoke the Bahraini people as a part of its suspicious plans. Nonviolence was informed that the former head of the National Democratic Action Society, Mr. Ibrahim Sharif, was arrested just after a short time since he was released by the government. In a former case, the Bahraini court had sentenced the political activist to four years in prison on allegations or attempts of overthrowing the regime and public incitement against the government. These charges followed the participation of Mr. Ibrahim Sharif in the public protests for the reformation. He was released three weeks ago from prison. Nonviolence organization believes that the Bahraini government's insistence for suppressing the opposition and arresting the leaders of protesters on political and criminal allegations is a sign that the government is trying to regain its domination and to escalate the confrontation between national forces with the peaceful protesters. So this organization demands the release of Ibrahim Sharif and the rest of the national opposition figures in Bahrain. Nonviolence organization also asks the Bahraini government to guarantee its people requests for political reform and establishing democratic foundation in the country. In the end, this center asks the Bahraini officials to end their autocratic rule over Bahrain. Last Thursday, the European Parliament adopted a resolution on human rights in Bahrain. The resolution, which was passed by a large majority in the Parliament, calls for a host of actions from the Bahraini government. Though this resolution, the European Parliament condemns all human rights violations committed in this country and calls on Bahrain to release all prisoners of conscience, ratify the International Convention for the Protection of the Prisoners Against Enforced Disappearance, respect the rights of juveniles, and more. In addition to the recommendations for the Bahraini government, the legislation encourages the UN to organize a visit by three special rapporteurs to the country. Also in the press released for the adopted resolution, the European Parliament recommended that the European Union implement a tear gas ban on the nation due to its excessive and negligent use by security forces to dismantle peaceful protests. Shia Rights Watch welcomes the resolution and praises its holistic nature. The passage of the resolution is important, especially after the United States decided to resume security assistance to Bahrain. While this resolution is non-binding, leaving implementation up to the parties address in the resolution, the continued recognition on human rights violations in the country keeps pressure on the Bahraini government to implement the substantive changes recommended. On June 12, Shia Rights Watch facilitated an international campaign on the International Day of Shia Rights to show solidarity with the hundreds of children currently imprisoned in Bahrain. Calls for the Bahraini authorities to respect the rights of children nearly a month after the campaign, shows that the discourse on the country is reached its highest levels of the international political system. Shia Rights Watch joins the European Parliament in calling for Bahrain to implement the recommendations contained in this resolution. <laughs>With the ever-growing number of Muslims across the Western countries, the need for expanding religious activities and programs has been dramatically magnified. To fulfill this need, Imam Shirazi Foundation has held a gathering which hosted several Islamic and cultural centers in Montreal, Canada. In this session, the participants offered their plans for future joint activities. Sheikh Sibouwe, a representative of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi and a host of this session, gave us more details in a phone call. Let's watch a report about this. Islamic centers and organizations have a great and undeniable role in helping the big communities of Muslims in the Western countries. These centers can bring all Muslims together and help them to adapt to a new style of life where their beliefs and values are respected. The activities of these Islamic centers can go far beyond that, and their title is an umbrella term embracing various cultural preaching and interfaith programs. The wide range of activities by these centers have given them the credit to perform as ambassadors of Islam in the Western culture. Apart from organizing the Muslims in the West, these centers can preset the true Islamic view about big concerns of our world, they can offer the Westerners a better and more tangible understanding of this holy religion and its merciful message. 
The significance of this point is doubled at our time, when the world encounters merciless killers and terrorists who commit all unspeakable crimes in the name of Islam. The overcrowded Islamic centers during special events like the Holy Month of Ramadan are a true sign of the need for more activities for serving the Muslims. However, it is crucial to have a constructive cooperation among all organizations. The Grand Jurors Ayatollah Shirazi has also highlighted the necessity for all Islamic centers and organizations to join their forces and grow the big Muslim community. Imam Shirazi Foundation is a leading and productive Islamic center in Montreal, Canada, which has aimed its efforts at serving the Muslim communities with different languages, ethnicities, and preferences in this country. To plan for more coordination and organization among all Islamic centers, Imam Shirazi Foundation has held a session where it hosted all other Islamic organizations in Canada. The representatives of these Islamic centers came together and discussed ways of improving their performances and establishing new joint programs. Such meetings between all Islamic centers can speed their progress and function as a vehicle to promote solidarity and cooperation among Islamic centers in the West. In addition, Sheikh Sibuva, the director of Imam Shirazi Foundation and a representative of Ayatollah Shirazi in Canada, offered its regards for all of these Islamic centers and the Grand Jury Ayatollah Shirazi. In the name of Allah, the compassion and merciful, this year for Ramadan, as every other year, with the help of God and our Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and his Ahlul Bayt, al aima al Athar, Salamullahi Alayhim, with the order of Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Husseini al Shirazi, may God give him long life to be one as a Muslims to work for Allah and our Prophet Muhammad and Aimatul Athar, Salamullahi Alayhim, to grow our community with the Sha'ir of Ahlul Bayt, Salamullahi Alayhim, we organized a Sahar event in order to gather all the Imams of Islamic Center in Montreal. Twelve Shia Imams and two Sunni Imams were present to our event. We had the pleasure to give them the best regard from Ayatollah Shirazi and his message, which is to be together, work together, and be one for Allah. In the end, we ask for your prayers in this way. Sheikh Saleh Sibaway, representative of Ayatollah Shirazi and the president of Imam Shirazi Foundation in Montreal, Canada. <laughs>
Do you know prayers, Islamic laws regarding halal and haram? The mentioned books are now available in Arabic for the enthusiasts. Member of Ayatollah Shuwazi Public Affairs Office met with Rasul Adam directors. Sheikh Ahmad Lami, a member of Ayatollah Shuwazi Public Affairs Office in the city of Kademiye Rok, visited the culture and charitable institute of Rasul Adam and met with its directors. During this meeting, both parties emphasized on the importance of cooperation between these two offices. Scholarly sessions held at Ayatollah Shuwazi office in Damascus. During the blissful month of Ramadan, the office of the Grand Jury Ayatollah Shuwazi in Damascus, Syria, has held nightly scholarly sessions. The scholarly sessions will continue until the end of Ramadan month. Distributing life necessities among veterinarian families in Baghdad. Following the guidelines of the Grand Ayatollah Shuwazi on supporting and taking care of the families of the martyrs and veterans in month of Ramadan, the Shuwazi followers office in Baghdad distributed life necessities and food supplies among tens of families. Ayatollah Shuwazi office host, director of Imam Hussein Shrine in Holy Karbala. Sheikh Abdul Mahdi Karbalai, the director of Imam Hussein Holy Shrine and his companions, visited the office of the Grand Ayatollah Shuwazi in the holy city of Karbala and met with its members. During this meeting, a variety of subjects regarding religion and life circumstances were discussed. <laughs> Following the daily meetings of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi in recent days, a number of scholars, religious, cultural and social figures, along with different groups of youngsters and the public from all around the world, gathered at Ayatollah Shirazi's central office and gave ear to the words, guidelines and advices from the Grand Jurist. That was all for this episode of the program Marjayat Horizon. For more information on our daily news about Marjayat, you can visit marjayattv.com and its official web pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until the next episode, may Allah preserve you. Bye for now.